epic Stattle One speedruns of statistics. Brian Stevens versus Chapter Two, displaying and summarizing data. Begin. The first thing we want to do is understand the range. And the range is simply the maximum value minus the minimum value. And notice how we're just taking them right here from the summary statistics. So we take 95 minus 16.2 to get the range of 78.8. .8. And notice how this is just the big number minus the small number, which tells us that the range and speed of the roller coasters was 78.8 .8 miles per hour. Now, when you think about the IQR, it's very similar. The IQR is just going to be the big number minus the small number, and the IQR represents the middle 50%, as in if you have four quarters, the middle 50% would be the two inner quarters going from 25% to 75%, so it's the range of the inter quarters of your data. So we're going to do the same thing of big number minus small number and take 65.3 right here and subtract 45 to give us the range of the middle 50% of 20.3 miles per hour. So this tells us the range and speed of the middle 50% of roller coasters was 20.3 miles per hour. The next big concept we want to understand is when to use mean and standard deviation and when to use median and IQR. Now, if the data is mostly normal, and what do we mean by mostly normal? We mean it's unimodal. This means it has one general mode. Now, due to the bins in the histogram, you might see what looks like a second mode, but this looks mostly normal. There's data that can look even more normal. So the data down here is definitely looking pretty normal. But up here, we have something that's mostly normal. But here we have something that is skewed with outliers. So let's compare and contrast. We have something that is skewed right here to the right. The tail goes to the right, right to the high, left to the low, whatever way the tail goes. You can see our monster dude right here with his tail going to the right. And you can see down here we have something that's mostly normal. It's kind of good enough to be normal. So when we do this right here, we need to know what is the proper measure of center and spread. And I want to point something out to you. Right here, you'll notice that the mean and the standard deviation are next to each other. This is because the mean and standard deviation are used together. The mean is the measure of center that goes along with the standard deviation as the measure of spread, and they are used for normal data. Up here, we have something that is skewed with outliers, and look, the median and the IQR are next to each other. So the median is the measure of center for skewed data, and the IQR is the measure of spread for skewed data. So make sure to remember that the mean and standard deviation go together when the data is normal, and the median and the IQR go together when the data is skewed or has outliers. Next thing we want to do is interpret the median, me the mean, and the quartiles. So let's go ahead to data that doesn't have so many decimals. And here we are. Let's interpret the mean first. Now, the mean is going to represent the average speed of a roller coaster. Make sure that all data has context. These are speeds of roller coasters. So we have right here that the average speed of a roller coaster was 54.5 miles per hour. Next, we need to interpret the median. The median is going to represent the 50th percentile of roller coaster speeds. So the 50th percentile of roller coaster speeds was 55 miles per hour. And what does this mean? At or above 55 is 50% 50 of the data, and at or below 55 is 50% is 50 of the data. Now, when we talk about the quartiles, we often talk about the 0, 25th, 50th, 75th, or 100th percentile. These are the quartiles we usually care about right here. So if you were to go to something like the 25th percentile, then that would mean at or above 45 is 75% of the data, or at or below 45 is 25% of the data. So we could say 75% uh, of roller coasters have speeds of 45 or higher, or 25% of roller coasters have speeds of 45 miles per hour or lower. Make sure to give the context to the data. Next, we need to interpret the IQR, which we've already done a little bit so far. The IQR is the range of the middle 50% of data. Kind of look to what it's called. It's called the interquartile range, the range of the interquarters. As though if you had two quarters right here, that'd be 50%, and it goes from 25 to 75. There are four quarters in the data you'll notice right here. So with this, the range of the middle 50% of the data is 20.3 miles per hour. 
So when we go here, we go 65.3 minus 45, and that's how we calculate the IQR, which represents the range of the middle 50% of speeds for these roller coasters. And we can also see it here in this box plot. The box plot has a line here at the lower end for the 25th percentile, and you can trace down to see that that's 45, that's at 45, and 65.3 would be right here. Next, we need to know how to look at a histogram and a stem and leaf. Now, when it comes to histograms and stem and leaves, Histograms and stem and leaves show the same type of data. They both show univariate quantitative data. Take a look. As I take my stem and leaf and I turn it, we have to do one last trick right here after we turn it. We need to go to the picture settings. And now we are going to flip the picture. And you will see when I find the button right here to flip the picture, here we go, rotate. And let's flip it horizontally that we have the same sort of shape. Now there is one difference due to the bin widths, but notice how it's kind of a unimodal with a little bit of a tail here. It's mostly unimodal and mostly symmetric. I'm gonna bring it back right here, but just trying to show you that it shows the same data. But the one thing we can see is that we actually see the numbers in the stem and leaf. You'll notice right here, if you notice they were different, that these have different bin widths. So we can talk just a moment here about bin widths. And the bin widths are the widths of these bins that collect the data. Right here, these bin widths are 2.5. And how would I figure this out? Well, I would take the distance that two numbers are apart, so 70 minus 60, and then I divide by how many bins there are. So each of those bins is 2.5. And you'll know you're correct if you could put that number right here, like 62.5. The bin widths over here are a little bit uh, smaller, and you might not notice, but there's five bins for the 70s, which means each of these bin widths is a bin of two. Think about this, we have the 70s, which encompasses 10 numbers going from 70 to 79, because 70 would count, and then we'd go to 79. And so we'd do 10 divided by two, which gives us the bin widths, excuse me, 10 divided by five, it'd give us the answer of two. And this is 70 and 71 here, 72 and 73, 74, 75. There was no one with a height of 77, there was just someone with 76 and 78. So if you might wonder, what's the point of a stem and leaf? You can see the numbers. So you can actually tell what the heights of the individuals were in this histogram. Take a look right here. You wouldn't know between 70 and 72.5 all the heights of these individuals. But if you go over here to between 70 and 72.5, you could actually see these heights. Now they are separated out right there, but these are all the people who would go into this bin right there. That bin right there has 70, 71, and 72. And then 73 would actually go into this bin right here, which would also have the 74. These individuals right here are in that bin. So you can tell also by the height how many individuals are in each of these bins. So a stem and leaf just shows you the observations in the histograms, and you can count how many individuals are in each bin. So next, we have the symmetry, skewness, and outliers. So when we talk about symmetry, a histogram will either be symmetric or skewed. And probably our best example of a symmetric histogram is going to be this one down here. And you notice it does look a little different if you change the bin widths, but this is a really good symmetric distribution because we could basically fold it over on itself. This one here is mostly symmetric on the next page up. This graphic here is mostly symmetric. There's just a little bit of a secondary bump, but we're probably just gonna say mostly symmetric there. But this one up here is skewed to the right, right to the high, left to the low, whatever way the tail goes. So this one here is right skewed, and this would be left skewed here. Left skew would be to the low side if the tail goes to the low side, right to the high, left to the low, whatever way the tail goes. You'll also generally see the outliers following the skew also. Next we have to solve the median by hand. Let's get prepared right here to solve the median by hand. And there's two key examples to solve the median by hand. To solve the median by hand, we should take all of our numbers and put them in order from least to greatest. So let's go ahead in this speed run right here, find our cursor. Where are we at? Here we are. And so let's go ahead and write a few numbers down for ourselves. We're gonna write down one, two, four, six, eight. Just a very small data set right here with only a few numbers. Now, the first step to this is to put them in order. 
Luckily, they're already in order right here. And the median will just be the middle number. Now, one thing I like to do, because we only do small data sets, we'll never ask you to do like 100 numbers, is I like to create this kind of seesaw effect right here. And if there is a middle number, that is the median. But what if we have a data set? Here's a more complex question like this. One, three, five, six, nine, and 11. Now with this right here, there is no middle number. If you notice down here, we have three numbers and up here we have three numbers. So the median for this data set would actually be 5.5. And let's make it very clear, this is the median. This is the median for the data set of 5.5 because we averaged together the two middle numbers. So if there is a middle number, the median would just be that middle number. If there is no middle number, we average together the two middle numbers. We don't ask you to find things like the IQR, the, excuse me, we don't ask you to find the 75th or the 25th by hand on the test. We just ask you to find things like the median and we would expect this on the test. So another thing we'd want you to know is if the numbers are not in order. So let's say we have numbers like five, eight, 11, one, three, six, and nine. So the first thing you'd want to do if you got a data set like this is to put the numbers in order. So we're gonna take these numbers right here and get them in order. We're just gonna rewrite all these numbers. And I think five is the only one that's out of order now. Oh, we've got an eight right there. So to find the median, you have to make sure your numbers are in order. So now that we have them in order, let's do our trick right here. It looks like we do have a middle number, so we win because we don't have to average stuff because right here at six, there are three numbers above it and there are three numbers below it. So the median is six right there. So we have solved the median by hand. Next, we have the five number summary. And when it comes to the five number summary, I want you to think about this. The five number summary can be represented by talking about the quarters in the data. So when we look at the five number summary, let's draw four quarters. Here's our four quarters for the data, the 25th, percentile would be here, the 50th percentile, the 75th percentile, and the 100th. So if you notice, we're going from 100, 0 to 25 to 50 to 75 to 100. And so now we just need names for these things. Let's talk about the names, such as the lowest number would be called the minimum. The highest number would be called the maximum. The middle number should be called the median. And now think about this. How much data have we added up at this point? Right here, we've only added up one quarter. So let's call that Q1. How much data have we added up at this point? Here, we've added up three quarters. So let's call this Q3. And this actually represents right here, the IQR. This right here is the IQR, which is the box of a box plot. So you'll notice right here, the five number summary, great way to remember it is to draw your four quarters, and then you can just put down the lines between them, four quarters and put your lines between them to get your five number summary. To calculate the mean, we're basically gonna do similar things to what we did with the median. We could take any of these number sets right here. Let's remove our little graphic below this because we don't need the median anymore. We're just gonna calculate the mean for these. To calculate the mean, you simply take all the numbers, add them up and divide by how many numbers there are. So be very careful, this is where mistakes happen. This first set of data is gonna be one plus two plus four plus six plus eight, divide by five numbers. And so we get 4.2. Now for this one right here, let's do something interesting. Let's write that right here. Mean of 4.2. And this data set, let's change it to 90. So this has an extreme outlier right here. So when you take it and you go one plus two, three plus five plus six plus 90. Now you're gonna divide by the five numbers and you get 21. Notice how the data set is skewed in the direction of the outlier. So the outlier right here inflates it, but what did not change when this goes from nine to 90? Notice what did not change. The mean would change but the median would not. The median is still a measure of position right here and it would not change. So when you change, uh, put outliers in a data set, they would impact the mean and not the median. So outliers impact the mean and not the median. Outliers impact the standard deviation also and not the IQR. So next we have that we need to talk about variance versus standard deviation. 
Now there's a really quick trick for this, really great quick trick that when you have, let's go into easier standard deviation. Standard deviation right here is just variance uh, square rooted. So let's talk about this. What is variance? If you take standard deviation right here and you were to, we'll take all the decimal places and you were to square it, that's variance. So basically variance is S squared. It's just standard deviation squared. That's all of it. So how do you turn it back into S? You just square root it. So to get the standard deviation from variance, you simply take the variance and you square root it. And there you go. Because standard deviation squared is variance and square root of variance is standard deviation. That does it. We're done. We almost went sub 15. Easy escape and B escape. Can you take this on? Speed run challenges out there.